Hey everybody, we're here for a new episode of Five for Talking. I almost called it something different, but it isn't. I'm here with Caps, the Muscles, uh, Marinara of the Sauces, and I'm here with Bargo. He's back in town. You know what I mean? Back in the show, back in the mix. So uh, we'll go. I'll get through the news stuff quickly. So you had the retiring of Lundqvist jersey this week, uh, which is nice. I mean, really good player, one of their best players of all time. 459 wins as a Ranger. Uh, I don't even think he ever played any other games on the other teams he went to. Um, you also he signed have... with Washington, but he never played a game. Yeah, That's he when his heart issues happen. I mean, I don't think there's much to talk about great goalie. Uh, Zubov, Sergei Zubov, uh, retired his jersey as well in Dallas. 839 games played as a star, 549 points, and he won a cup with them. So, I mean... Well, you won a couple in New York too, right? I not hundred percent. I think so. One with yeah, uh, New York and one with Dallas. All right, there you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Seven hundred seventy-one points. Career, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good uh, plus minus. Pretty Best. pretty solid offensive defenseman, and he Top could play five a, in power play. Yeah, he could play a defensive uh, end game too. So you know, good. And then lastly, we have Drew Doughty, a thousand games. Good on him. Uh, Five hundred fifty-eight mm. points, two cups as a LA King. Um, he's going to get retired. So, I mean, if he belongs in that conversation. Uh, great defenseman. All right. So let's go uh, start this off with, I, I'm going to say Philadelphia. Uh, they are, they've had their second 10 game losing streak of the season. Uh, they are currently at 13 games. They do play this afternoon. Um, and somehow they still have 11 more points in Montreal, but I mean, this is a team that we thought was going to be a lot better than this. Uh, their roster says they should be a lot better than this. And um, even in our rankings, which uh, for next week, you're going to get the tier list, the re-ranking of the tier list. Uh, we had them pretty high up. Uh, anyone thoughts on Philadelphia Flyers? Uh, I think they need to like do like a little breakdown. They're like in like Edmonton syndrome right now. They have all this star power and all this good talent, and they can't figure out what to do. I mean, Edmonton's Maybe probably coach. a little better, but now, yeah. But I'm saying when they had all those first round draft picks, they were they weren't even making the playoffs. Yeah, Philadelphia is pretty like their roster's pretty good. Um, there's no reason they should be this bad, except for <laughs> what do you do? Fire everybody? Coach. Yeah. Let's see what so happens. I'll- I saw a press conference maybe a few days ago uh, with the owner and uh, the GM. And the, the, the owner is very adamant about keeping the GM because he likes the way he does, th- does things. And the GM, when asked about what's going wrong with the team, he said, there's too many injuries, which is, and there's too many people with, you know, going off and on with COVID and all that stuff. No different from any other team, but it just shows the lack of depth this team has when you have injuries, especially with the Philadelphia Flyers. He also said that um, the team spends too much time in the defensive zone. And when you're spending too much time defending, obviously you're not scoring. So they have no chance of of winning games. Um, And he feels as though that is the biggest challenge for them right now is trying to get out of the defensive zone because um, their defense or anybody up forward is having a hard time bringing the puck out of their own defensive zone. So uh, according to him, that's their biggest issue and that's the biggest challenge that they're facing right now. I mean, that's all valid points. So I don't really have – I don't even have an arguing point to that. Uh, I agree. Uh, They just need to figure it out somehow. Uh, it can't all be injuries, but I understand the troubles that you can have from that. So, I mean, what are you going to do? Um, as far as that goes, we might as well segue injuries into the Buffalo Sabres right now who have all six active goalies in the entire organization, including the AHL, are out or injured. Um, which or suspended. Is- Suspended, but we'll get into that because that goes somewhere else with that. But uh, th- that's pretty crazy, right? Like six goal. Who do you play? Because the AHL team needs goalies too. 
Did they play their Zamboni driver? Yep. They're going to have to go out and find someone short term to fill in for the goalies that are all out. I mean, there's really nothing that you can do at this point. And it's not like the Buffalo Sabres have any chance of making the playoffs anyway. Well, a slim chance. But um, at this point, you're going to have to make some trades and sign some players to help your team going forward because right now it's just not happening. Um, and if we're going to touch on what Dell did, are we going to touch on that? Or yeah, that's where I was going to go next. Players? I was going to segue, so you might okay. as well. So there have been four instances with Dell and none of them uh, he got suspended for. But when it comes to this in the new NHL, it's definitely uh, warranted uh, as a suspension. Uh, clearly, he uh, was interfering in the play. And if you look closely, there was a bit of an elbow to the head. <laughs> so, you know, it, that could have been much more worse than it actually was. Um, but, you know, stupid play on Dell. I'm sorry. In the I new agree. NHL. But I, in the I, old, no. old NHL, probably wouldn't have happened. But in the new NHL... Stupid play on Dell. Because... I think either way, that was a stupid play. It was full on, no like doubt about it. Interference. I don't. He didn't I'm not even saying... get out of the way. You didn't. Yeah. Even, you didn't try to get out of the way. He, I, I'm not going to go out of my way here to say this hit was dirty or he meant to injure him because he felt awkwardly from the hit. The hit wasn't the reason he got injured, but he fully interfered. There was no way that was not interference. Even in the old NHL, you would have got a penalty for that probably. <laughs> Um, but it's just crazy. And I don't know, do you have anything on that, Bargo? Yeah, it just it kind of raises a lot of questions. Like now our goalies free game, if this is what's going to happen. Uh, we well, hit goalies. This is the get thing rid with of the goalies tra- Get rid of the trap zone. If, if the goalie's out of the crease, you should, or not in the trap zone, which he wasn't either. He had his foot out of the trap zone and he was out of his crease. He should be allowed to be hit. But if you hit him, you probably would have got suspended and you would have had to fight the whole team after. Yeah. So well, unless you're the Leafs, no one would have fought. The but... whole point of that trap corner thing was so goalies don't get hit. Yeah. But if goalies are going to come out and start laying out players, no. it was I just, think it should be returned. I mean, we're, I'm not seeing this as like a league-wide phenomenon or anything. It's It's just... Um, it was unnecessary. And going forward with this, you took away Drake Batherson's uh, shot at his first All Star game. He's having an amazing season, like defensively, offensively. He's hitting. He's doing everything any player should be asked to do. And he's going to he miss his All Star game. Uh, I don't know what he's out, but he. Uh, I think he it was some a leg injury. Uh, it's it says two two weeks to a month. Um, so I, yeah, I that makes sense. That makes sense. It According was ankle. Boards, makes sense. It was ankle. It was an ankle injury, but, that um, it, and now he's being replaced by Brady Kachuk. <clears> which, yeah, two month ankle sprain. Yeah. It, it's, it, he hit all ankle right into the boards. So, <laughs> I mean, it, it sucks for that reason as well. Like he, who knows, you know what I mean? Like what if this affects him for the rest of his career? Uh, really, ankle bright. sprain. He might have ankle injuries forever. Look at Steph Curry in basketball. Guy literally every time someone touches his ankle, he goes out. Yeah, it was probably like muscle de- deals with that one though. Yeah. Anyways, uh, continuing on here, um, Bargo, you want to talk about your Anaheim rookies? Yeah. Um, where am I here? So you got uh, right now they're rolling, man. Like I mean, Anaheim overall is doing decent. Like they're doing well, probably better than we expected. Um, you have Zagres, or I don't even know how to pronounce his name correctly, 40 games played, 32 points. The yeah. only downside to him is his plus minus is minus 11. Yeah, but you, they're I not mean, on the greatest team, so. Yeah, he's only played 64 games as well as a whole. So, I mean, I don't expect that to be solid, but not the, bad, man. The, the talent, though, this is the thing. The points don't speak for the <clears> stuff that he's doing on the ice. Yeah, he's crafty. He's like putting on a show too, right? So I mean, there's a lot more than just that. Like he scored the Michigan. He made that Michigan pass over the back of the net. Like, yeah, it's entertaining to watch. Like if you're an Anaheim fan, like it's nice to see that going on. You know, you got uh, Troy Terry. 
He's got 40 points right now. Holy crap, uh, he's got 40 points? 40 points, 41 games played. Uh, runner for rookie of the year. So, I mean, there's a lot of good out of that too, right? Yeah, uh, it's nice to see guests left too. He's on pace to have 80 points. Yeah, that's that's nice. Uh, and and you got you got Getzlaff that's playing on their line, who's showing old Getzlaff styles. Like yeah, his, his, he, his playmaking on, is on point. His playmaking is on point. He's finding those young guys. Maybe that's what he needed all this time with some young, talented players that can finish for him. He's got 38 games played and 26 points. 23 of those points are assists. So they're doing. He's doing the work, and they're finishing off his uh, saucers. But yeah, I don't know. It's nice to see. Absolutely. You know, there, there are so many benefits to this right now because uh, since Gitzloff is having like a sort of a second coming uh, in terms of points and and all that stuff, but they pretty much rub off each other. He, you know, shows them leadership and, and all that stuff. And he's just sort of like rubbing off their uh, skills and whatnot. He's uh, uh, you know, getting a lot of points out of this. So, and for the fans, and I know you touched on it, Bargo, but it's for the fans as well because of these young kids that are putting on f- these great um, playmaking abilities um, and, and showing off these crazy skills. It, it, it's it's very very appealing to the crowd as well for the Anaheim money. And I almost said Mighty Ducks, Anaheim Ducks. Bring back um, the name. You I know, agree. It, it's it's definitely. Um, it's definitely a benefit for, for Anaheim. So um, It's like the old school Ducks, man. Yeah. You, you know, it's so funny because at the beginning of the season, um, we all said, I, I personally said that Anaheim was probably going to go through a rebuild and they were not going to do well. This, we had this them ranked second last. Yeah. It, it's 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 crazy. Um, good on them. Good on them. It's sort of like they're fast-tracking their rebuild. And, and I think this is great for Getzlov. I think a lot of it has to do with him. He's on the tail end of leadership. his uh, like, gets leadership. Left, playoff gets left. He's a different beast too. Like I remember watching him play in the playoffs, and he's like he stood okay. out. The one year, in everyone's face everything. The year when it was Anaheim and Nashville, I think, and it was Ottawa and Pittsburgh. I, I believe that's what. It, and and Ottawa was like doing amazing. It's when Crosby won that his last cup. Uh, and I remember Getzlaff was on fire. I think, what was that, like 2016 or 2017? And Getzlaff was like ripping apart the playoffs. He was absolutely unstoppable. He was hitting everybody, getting yeah. everyone's face after whistles. Like, he's a different beast come playoff time. And I think the fact of him being there with those young guys, it's going to uh, grow them differently. Like, they're not going to be your Edmonton rookies like in uh, Nugent Hopkins and those other guys. You have Drysdale as well, who's a rookie defenseman. Team Canada, like he's doing really well as well. The other game I watched the other day, he scored a goal. Yeah, yeah, he's going to be good. Mm-hmm. I just want to so. add in there that you know, in the beginning of this season, one of the topics was where's going to where's Getzlaff going because yeah, you know, uh, as a rental, he's going to benefit the other team uh, for a deep playoff run. He doesn't need to go anywhere. Right now, this team is projected to make the playoffs, even though that the West is going to be very competitive. There are going to be a lot of teams, and it's very close right now for a lot of teams, uh, especially in the wild card. But right now, he doesn't need to go anywhere because Anaheim is making the playoffs, and we all know what it gets off yeah. doing the playoffs. You guys touch, touched on that already. Yeah, and the, if, they the, can, if they can polish up defensively. The, like, the West not, is going to be tough for them, though. Yeah, not like – don't let them score so many goals against them in the playoffs. They'll be a competitive team. Okay, so currently, if you we this is the next thing I was going to talk about, anyways, but this links up well. So if you look at the playoff race in the wild card divisionally, um, the West basically is super super close all the way through. The East is like the closest team with a shot is Detroit, and they're like still on nine points out of a playoff spot. So I mean, they don't even have, really have a chance when you look at the West. You have, you have Dallas, San Jose, Edmonton, Vancouver, Winnipeg, Chicago, and even Seattle all within like 10 points of making it into the playoffs. And the, the East, the only <laughs> contender right now to have a shot is Detroit. No one else has a shot. So, I yeah, mean. No, and Detroit being in last place last year or second last. Yeah, well, th- there's a lot of upcoming teams coming out 
Uh, LA is doing really good. Calgary's having a really good year. And these are all teams we expected not to do very well. Um, but we'll get in. We'll save that for when we do our tier list. Um, so uh, Evander Kane um, got signed to Edmonton. I fully disagree uh, with this move. I think it's a desperation move. And like, I'm not here to judge people or anything. So I don't want this to come off the wrong way, but he's not a good person, clearly. And I don't think he deserves a 47th chance um because that's what this is and it's crazy do we have an official word on how much he's getting paid 759k i believe it was or 760 750 i think is the max is the lowest and then yeah he's getting the absolute lowest contract you can get with a bonus that is is double the money uh so but i believe the bonus is like literally he has to score three goals or something okay Here's my take, and I'm going to keep it strictly hockey. Yeah. Okay? I'm not going to involve all this other stuff. Absolutely. That's fair. This, if he could keep his attitude in check, is an absolute win. It's a steal of a move. It's a steal. If, If he can keep his attitude in check. He brings something to the table that a lot of players on that team, with the exception of Nurse, um, they don't have. Uh, He can fight. He can hit. He can be very physical, and and he's a top six forward getting paid seven hundred fifty k. Yeah, he he can easily score twenty goals in the remaining time of the season. So. And and it's not like he's an overhill player, man. He's don't he's like thirty years yeah, old. Yeah, he's he in the still, he's in his end of his prime. He's still there. He could still do it. So I think, and I'm sorry, I, I kind of it's just a strictly hockey. Yeah, absolutely. It's a steal for him. I, I think, think this is a steal. If he could keep his attitude in check from and he hockey, can keep his eye on the ball. From a hockey move, I think it's absolutely a great move for Edmonton. But like I, like I said, I'm not going to get into it. But from the political standpoint of the NHL and what they should be standing for, I don't think he should have been allowed to get signed. I just just is my thing. But I mean, for Edmonton, keeping it strictly hockey. Yeah, keeping so. it hockey, good on Edmonton. I don't know if Fargo has anything on that. Yeah, I think it's for him personally. It's a great opportunity. You're gonna play with the two best players in the scorers, NHL right now, in playing the in the NHL. Um, is it what Edmonton needs? Not even close. They do not need another forward. I mean, but for the price, I, you can't. For what you're getting, yeah, for it. what you're getting, and what 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 he is, he'll he'll probably fit well on the team. But for him, yeah, like Nick said, attitude in check is a must. Yeah, and he couldn't keep in check in Winnipeg under Bufflin and those guys. Do you think McDavid's going to go in the locker room and tell Evander Kane, don't do that out there or don't fight out there or don't don't say that out there? McDavid's probably not even going to confront him as a captain. Like, you know That's what I mean? A, it's a so like it's, it's He's in a weird situation where who's going to stand up to him on the roster and tell him not to do this? Like, he, he messed up in Winnipeg. They took his clothes and threw it in the shower to, like, disrespect him because he came to practice in a track suit and not a suit. So I mean, who's gonna who's gonna stand up to him and tell him what he? Can I mean, and it's that's and, in in fairness to what you're saying on that point. San Jose also has a lot of leadership type players, Carlson yeah, and Burns Burn, like, Burn, and like Couture, so and it's like, and they couldn't keep him yeah, in check. They couldn't there. keep him in check either. What's but I mean, happen if- maybe the change of scenery will help him. Who knows? Uh, but I do agree with Caps that 100. <laughs> He does. A steal. You can't lose in this scenario with him unless he just doesn't show up at all, and then you didn't. You only paid seven hundred k. So who cares? Yeah, the yeah, risk I is. It, I don't even care if he gets ten points in the rest of the season. It's a win, but if he starts acting out, it's a it's an automatic loss. Period. Yeah. Caps, what did you say? For seven hundred fifty k, the list, the risk is kind of low. There's no but, risk. You know, it's this, You know what I mean? It's. Well, and don't forget, he played for Buffalo, too. Like he played for Buffalo, too, before he went to San Jose. So, you know, he had issues there as well. But, um, you know, it's so funny how you brought up that, that whole point about McDavid and, and, and Kane. Maybe at first, you know, you'll probably be able to tell Kane, hey, listen, simmer down. But at, at what point can you keep saying that until Kane says, you know what? Shut Screw up. Screw you. <laughs> yeah. It's when like, Niagara Falls hit the casino. But yeah. I think I, – I, I'm not sure who brought it up, but it's – one of you guys talked about being on the same page in Edmonton. 
And it seems as though it's very apparent that they are not. And not just with the players, but it seems as though with management and the coach as well. Because if you looked at the press conference and bringing in the Vander Cave, uh, at one point in the, uh, the uh, presser, um, um, what's the uh, GM's name again? Oh, my God. I want to uh, say Ken Holland. Shovel. Ken Holland. Ken Holland. Ken Holland. I was going to say Shovel Day Off. <clears throat> Ken Holland said, looked over to the side and looked at Tippett and, and Kane, and, and he was bringing up um, the fact that, hey, are, are you go- you ready to go Saturday? And without even a practice, um, Kane's like, yeah, I'm, I'm good to go. Let's go. Let's do it. And, and Tippett's like, like, what the hell? Like, we didn't even have a practice yet with him, and you wanted to play him tomorrow. You want me to remove someone out of so my it, lineup it, and play him in? It's like, That's it's been not, all week. You know what I mean? It's like, they're not even... But this could be one of the issues of why Edmonton's struggling. There's no structure in the locker room. The coach is getting overridden on all of these plays. And I also, I read an article... They're on a three-game winning streak right now. Though, yes. But we'll see how well, that in, plays in, out. With that, how close the West is too, right? They have always have a shot of not making it. And I read an article recently that was talking about is Ken Holland actually a good GM? Like, did the stuff he do everywhere else was it actually him, or was it just random chance that these things happen? Because it, uh, it was a full breakdown. Uh, it was on, I believe, the Hockey News. If anyone gets a chance, go check that out. It was a pretty good read. Uh, it, it like it adds a lot of like intrigue to the point of like did he really plan this or did this just happen kind of thing? And there's a lot of good evidence saying that it just happened. Um, So, I mean, check that out, but that is what it is. I think the success of a team is, is surrounded by the people that you are surrounded by, I guess. Um, And I think Ken Holland and Detroit was surrounded by a lot of very competent and very successful people. So I don't think, I think he had a hand in it, but I think the people that he was surrounded with or or by, like, really helped uh, with his success in Detroit. I think he's done um, a lot of things in Edmonton, but I still think it's a little early in whether or not it's good or not. That's Um, fair. So I I think, you know, maybe we should, uh, you know, wait a bit until we really give our opinions on on Ken Holland. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Um, I don't have anything else. Do you guys have anything? I do, actually. I I mean, you touch on Sergei Zubov, but I really don't think that we gave Lundqvist his due in terms of what he's done. And, and, you know, it's it's really astounding. Um, Six all-time wins, 459. uh, One Vesna, one gold. Unfortunately, he was not able to get a Stanley Cup, but I think he had a lot of success. Yeah. Most wins wins in, in... and with the New York Rangers, I think he he's the best goalie deserves, in franchise history. Definitely deserves his due, and and I think he's uh, becoming a studio analyst now with uh, the New York, Ra- New York yeah, Rangers. Yeah, I believe so he got signed. Um, he could do. I have no doubt in my mind that had he not got injured a couple of times or had these heart issues, he would have passed 500 wins, and uh, he would have really had a shot at a cup with Washington. But I mean, it is what it is. He at the end of the day, his career speaks for itself. Uh, Stanley Cup or no Stanley Cup, uh, he won on a lot of really, really bad New York Rangers teams. So I'd like to get he, he went to the fi- they went time. to the finals. They went to the finals. He carried that team for a long time, long time. But yeah, other than that, I'm I'm good. Yeah, I, to be honest with you, I'm good as well. I don't. There's nothing really to talk about in the Leafs world. Um, it's about the status <clears throat> quo for the last two weeks. Hasn't much. Nothing really has changed. Uh, in Changing the, the lines, but that, that's pretty much yeah. It. The mean, lines it's only one game. Let's see what happens tonight. Yeah, they're they're they won two in a row, watch. right? What was that? They won two in a row, didn't they? No, uh, I know they won um, in overtime. No, not in the shootout. But and uh, they won. They won three two the other day when they switched the lines on Wednesday last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's so, see how it goes. Their games see tonight. Goes. Uh, we'll I get think, into that. Uh, Go ahead. I think the line change was really difficult to watch. Like a lot of the guys were not on the same page. Like offensively, <clears throat> they they won the game, but they won the game with power play goals. They it, didn't win the game felt, five on five. It felt like a real shakeup. Like this yeah, wasn't just lost like that a, game. a slight adjustment. They would have lost that game if they didn't have that penalty at the beginning of the game. That yeah, game would have so, been done. I mean, five on five, they looked like they were like lost. 
I don't know if uh, now is the time to be trying to build chemistry with other players. You're in freaking well, we, January right now. That's now. what we and talked about last week like... specifically was you can't just <laughs> – by at this point of the year, this is my problem with Sheldon Keith, and I don't know if it's coming down from above or not. Stop are you changing the now? lines. Stop changing the lines. If someone gets injured, replace them. That's fine. I understand that. Stop changing the lines. They're, how are they ever going to have chemistry <clears throat> going into the playoffs when you change the lines every week? If you're like you're Matthews and shit, you're going into the playoffs, who am I playing with, coach? Yeah. Meanwhile, we uh, Justin Hall's a solid lock on that second defensive unit, but your forwards change every game. Like this guy should be changing in the locker room and getting fired. So uh, I don't know. Anyways, yeah. do you have anything we, else? Well, no, it's just we, we know that Toronto Maple Leafs have historically have how always had a bad January. So uh and that's I, actually it's true. Just, it's <laughs> I, I don't know. I really don't I don't know. I I, I'd be hard pressed should, to find a good this, January. This stuff should be happening during the preseason, during practice. Yes. In the beginning of the season. You know, mm-hmm. you want to figure out the lines, all this stuff. When January comes, everything should be established. Everything should be absolutely. It's time to go because every other team in the NHL has gotten better. They're set. They're in mid-season mode, which means it's go time. And to be experimental mid-season is one hell of a When you're already doing well. Good (laughs) or bad, let's see what happens. But, like, you know, ever since they came back from COVID, they haven't been doing very well in my eyes. But that's just, you know, trying to work things out or whatever the case may be. But then to go into this experimental mode, I don't know, man. It's it's very risky. If it turns out good, good on him. If it turns out bad. Yeah, that's it. I'll leave it yeah, at that. I don't see the good in that. That should have been done preseason, beginning <laughs> yeah. of season, and at practice. You're at right, practice, though. If they look good, you implement it. If they don't look good, you yeah. don't do it. No, no, I think that's fair. Um, I think we should end this here. Guys, thank you for watching. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, just let us know what you think about this episode, uh, if what you want us to do for another episode upcoming. Uh, thank you for watching.